For Doppler and M-mode imaging, I'm going to start off with the linear transducer to show pulse wave Doppler, and then I'll switch over to the sector transducer and show you how everything's done in cardiac. The PW Doppler is pretty straightforward. You're just going to hit PW, and you'll get your cursor. I'll just get a random image up here. Um, and here you can change the sample volume. I can hit enter and go right into pulse wave Doppler. But let's say I wanted to make some changes. Get that arrow. I can change my gate size. Notice here by hitting this, the 2D size. Change here the sample position by using the trackball. Here's sample volume, and then if I click 2D size or 2D position, that's going to do the same thing as it did before. It's going to move around my 2D image or the width of that image. We also have our steering the quick angles here. My angle adjusts, which will twist it down here. If I press, it does the quick angle, and I'm not sure if you can see it on there, but there is a blue line that shows my quick angle along with the direction of the blood flow. I have my steering. I could steer that sample volume through here, or just click left, right, center, and you can see how that sample box changes size. So we can also change the gate size here. Go to next, and we have intelligent Doppler. And that's going to just try and assume it knows what you're doing there. So we turn that on. We'll hit pulse wave Doppler. And again, my angle's all messed up, so that angle's obviously not correct, so I'm not getting the correct flow there. But here I can scroll through the cine with the trackball can hit this and I can go look through my 2D city. That's how you're going to flip back and forth. I can make my angle adjustments here. Bring that to 60 degrees going that way and that's going to, let's go ahead and change that. Here's the scale also known as PRF. You can see that the scale changes over here. So that's also known as pulse repetition fre frequency. Some people know them as opposite names. So uh, we also have high Q, which is an auto Doppler calculation. Let me update to get that 2D image back. So I clicked update. So I have my 2D image live there. And then I'll click update again. If I want to get 2D, obviously I've changed the scale a great deal. Turn down the volume over here because it's a little loud. That's this rocker switch right here. But let me adjust my baseline to something a little more normal. And then change my scale. And up here, we have the auto calculations. That is taking an average of a few heartbeats and going there. I don't have an ECG attached, but it still works. Now over here, we have compression and rejection. We can change the compression. If we hit reject, that's going to get rid of some of the artifact in the image. Again, you push down to choose compression or reject, and you'll see it changes down here. Duplex for duplex imaging. Again, we can change that gate, make it a little smaller again. Page two, we have our intelligent Doppler on. We'll turn that off. Eye scan for this here, where you're up going with the opti image optimization. Mean trace, directional, your map, pitch. Changes the pitch of the sound. We can hear that a little better now. smooth. Trace the mean all the way through by clicking mean trace. Chroma, we already did the intelligent Doppler. And you can change your wall filter 
here. That's filter and frequency. I'm changing the frequency right now. And I can go back to the filter and change my wall filter. Now we'll move on to the sector probe. Okay, so I've removed the linear probe, moved on to the sector probe, and the image is quite a bit different besides the obvious. First thing is you have this line going down the middle, which is your Doppler line, that you can place before you get your image into position. Other items remain the same, but here's where we're going to want to change. You can change your ECG because it automatically pops up there. I don't have one attached, but you can make the changes to turn the trigger on or off to a timer off the ECG, where the, how that's going to do, off the beats, ECG position, you can twist that to move it up and down. You can invert it. Now, also you can choose lead one, lead two, or lead three. You can have up to three ECG leads on this system, which is obviously unique uh, and much more like a console system. Most just allow one. Going to page two, this is the same as the other. Okay, so I'm just going to put this probe on my hand. That's not an image, it's just in the palm of my hand, like that, just to give you an image. Hit PW Doppler, and we have our gate up there. Again, you can change your sample volume, position, and size. You have your update to go back and forth from 2D. And same thing here, you can adjust your angle of that gate, your scale, move your baseline, turn off the auto calculations, turn it on and off. Compression, rejection, again, all these remain the same. You just don't have the angles that you would find on the uh, linear transducer. So let's get out of that just by hitting the 2D button. Go over here to tissue Doppler. And that's our tissue Doppler imaging. You can add PW Doppler by hitting PW. You can hit M mode. Press M mode just to switch between TDI and M mode. Just flip back and forth that way. We'll hit TDI again. Notice went to amber, green on, amber off as discussed earlier. This gain, this active gain, you can change the gain. See up top and down below, just by clicking that active mode, it's going to change the gain in whatever image it's referring to. So I can change the M mode gain and otherwise. For color, just hit the color button. Uh, let's go back to 2D first. We'll hit color and we'll get our color box. And now this cheat sheet for the trackball here tells me do I want to change the box position? Click here, I can get that Doppler cursor, press it again, and I can get the box size. I don't know how, you, how well you can see that, but the color box is changing size, but that will help there. Let me turn up that color gain so you can see it better. Now I'm changing the box size, the position, and now I'm moving the Doppler cursor, which you can't really see there. Turn that down a little bit. And let's make that box size a little smaller. Again, we have our active mode for gain. We can change the 2D gain or the color gain. By pressing the active mode, you can choose those two. Let's go back here to page two. You have your variance, and the variance uh, indicates the change in blood flow or any possible turbulence due to an obstruction, and that can be at, you know mapped straight to a color. So if you have variance, you can change the color map of the variance if you've got that turned on. Line density improves the image quality uh, at, while reducing the frame rate. So the low line density is going to give you a better frame rate, but weaker image. High will give you a better resolution uh, at a lower frame rate. Persistence and smooth, you're going to push down to switch between color smoothness and persistence. And finally, we have CW Doppler. It works the same as PW. Let's go back here and go back to the 2D image. Uh, we can see this little blue dot in the cursor. Let me get that off. 
I can move it up and down. There's a tiny little blue dot. Hopefully you can see it on the screen. But that's where we would put basically that little CW Doppler cursor, which acts as a microphone saying where it's going to be. As soon as you've got it positioned on your image, you're going to go ahead and hit CW Doppler, and it jumps right into it. And again, much of the controls are the exact same as you would find in pulse wave Doppler or other modes. And that's it for Doppler and M modes. And next we'll get into uh, image review and reports.